Hi everyone, how are you doing? You are right? Um, near the end of the afternoon, how, in, I think I might be the sort of, uh, almost the graveyard slot, but maybe, hopefully not. So, uh, I am uh, Andrew, I'm from London South Bank University. My talk is, add more stuff, but make it simpler. Uh, tackling the Moodle UX needs of a large educational institution. It's a, a little bit of a grandiose title, but I thought, why not? Um, my talk's really a show and tell, a uh, bit like some of the other ones, about what we've been doing at LSBU. Um, and we've had a major review. We ha we've had Moodle for four or five years. And in that time, it's, it's grown a bit stale. It needed a, a good look at it. And actually, this has been a quite a long, ongoing project, uh, which is just going to be getting launched in the summer, a new, uh, new theme, new, a whole bunch of new other things in it. So I'm going to take you through what we've been working on. Um, done, made about five or six plugins that are around this. A lot of it's to do with our um, dashboard experience, but some in-course stuff as well. And uh, I'm going to just cover a little bit about the process we went through, um, you know, how we engaged with our stakeholders, and uh, just some of the thought processes we, we went through during this, this project. Uh, it's nothing earth-shattering, but I just think there's, we've, we've made some quite useful customizations that you might find interesting as a room full of Moodlers. Maybe not that many other people would find them that interesting, but hopefully we will. Um, it also might be of interest to anyone whose Moodle at the moment is looking a bit um, stale and maybe needing a bit of work in this area of user experience. Hopefully there's not too many of you like that. Or anyone who just comes from that uh, kind of university background like me, which maybe many of you do, you might, this might chime in with you. And I also just want to kind of add to the UX conversation a bit that we've been having in some of the other uh, chats so far, um, especially from the perspective of uh, a big institution that has lots going on and we often have a lot of confinement because of that. So we, we, it's not just UX done in a kind of blue sky thinking, trying to make things as best they can be. It's also doing that within quite a few limitations that we need to work with. Um, okay, so. so just looking at large institutions in general, I'm sure this will be familiar to you, but this is what's true at, at LSBU. Uh, we've got a l large number and big diversity of courses, of course, all kinds of different things going on. Uh, we've got thousands of courses every, every year. Um, we've got many different use cases, role types, things like that. We have students, we have academics, we have administrators, we have external people, and we have a whole bunch of other um, types of people that use our uh, environment. And we kind of need them to have a bit of a personalized experience as well. Uh, what each, each type of person needs from their dashboard, etc., is not quite the same. Um, there's also many different business areas in our university. And there's some t I've put competing requirements on the slide, but it's just um, sometimes it's a kind of competition to get your little bit of something on, on Moodle or, or your little bit of space. Um, so that's what that was about. Um, we've got lots of processes that go on, uh, academic processes, admin processes that have to happen either through Moodle or something to do with Moodle affects something to do with the process or vice versa. And there's a lot of information that needs to go along with those. And um, I think with, with Moodles that are out there, you also you get everything from course creation that's very tightly focused. We have, you may have lots of learning technologists working for you, or you may be a small commercial operation or a large commercial operation where the course content is very well controlled. Everything to the complete wild west where we've got lots of hundreds of, of different people who can all put whatever content they want. LSBU is pretty far over to the wild west side of that spectrum. We do have some learning technologists scattered around our organization. But generally, we're quite thin on the ground in that. So a lot of it um, is down to the academics to get their courses up and do what they need to do with them. Um, the main thing I think that's going to be covered in the first part of this talk is that Moodle is often, it kind of functions as a hub or a um, portal for a lot of things, or it's, people want it to. We do have other portals for that. We've got a student portal. We have a staff uh, intranet. These are the places that are supposed to be where you go to to get other stuff that isn't just your courses and your learning content. However, because Moodle is so commonly used and it's the one that people always say that's what the students are using day in, day out, uh, we get this kind of increasing demand to 
put things on Moodle. We often get this, can we just put that thing on, on Moodle? Um, even though it's not really anything to do with exactly what Moodle is designed for. So we're kind of wanting Moodle to be a bit more than an LMS sometimes uh, for our institution. We kind of want to max it out, uh, but still keep a good user experience, get people into their courses and get to their, their academic content. And lastly, change can be painful. I don't know if anyone feels that in their organisation. I do in mine. It's not always the case, but um, we can't always easily just adopt the latest, greatest thing. Uh, we, find, we find that we need to take baby steps sometimes and introduce people to change in a gradual way. So, uh, interestingly, quite a lot of the things that we've been thinking about, and this has been going on for actually a few years now, there's a bit of history to this project, it's had a few false starts. Um, some of them have been coming out now and are becoming more or less standard in in Moodle with uh, things like the Boost theme coming out and um, so there's some parallels there. Um, um, LSPU, just the problems that we had, there were quite a few with our uh, existing VLE implementation. The theme's pretty out of date, you'll see a little snapshot in a minute of it. And the dashboard experience is just not very focused, it's, it's not very effective, it's noisy. Um, we're not, we were told that we're not making the best use of this platform as a communication tool. That's not just to do with the courses that are on Moodle, but in general, and also communicating about the system and how to use it, access to things like help materials. Um, when we engaged with our students, we found that one of the biggest problems they had was actually finding what they need. And as I said, a, a big part of that is to do with the Wild West side of things and how courses are structured, so we can't do too much about that. But there, was, there were ways which we found which we think helped um, kind of improve navigation, little tweaks here and there that I'll take you through. And yeah, we need to make our help and support more visible. These are all the things we were told when we went out to engage. Okay, this is our existing uh, dashboard page, our current theme, uh, it's, well it's an old, it, I'll refer it to as the old one, but it's still there in place. It's going to be replaced with a new one this summer. Um, I think it's kind of ugly. <laughs> uh, it's, it's pretty out of date. It's rather boring and plain. There's not a lot of differentiation, visual hierarchy going on there. Um, it's, just, it's a big list of courses down the middle, as you can see. There is some kind of categorization. Uh, you can see on the right and left, we've got different kind of links to all sorts of things. Uh, top right there. We've got um, it, this notice board. So that's news coming in. This is stuff that's supposed to be on our other platform, the student uh, portal platform, but we, you know, we, people wanted that to feed into Moodle. Uh, and these links go down and down the page. I can't scroll down on here, but this is just the top quarter or something of, the, of all the gubbins that we've got down the, the, the dashboard page. And what we, we, we were told and when we went and sat down with people and workshop this was that nobody looks at either side of that. They, all they want to do is get to their course, so they'll, they'll scan down their courses and they'll click on that and we could have anything there. However, we, when we asked them what could we get rid of out of those things, they, there wasn't much really. People said, yeah, you just get rid of it all. Oh, but you know, can you keep this thing and that thing? Before we knew it, they more or less, we got back up to the same stuff. Nobody really wanted to get rid of any of the links of the, the odd sort of 10% of people were used to finding their email by, for some reason, logging into Moodle, scrolling down the page and clicking the 23rd link on the left. I don't know. So the, we have those people. Um, I help materials. They're on this page, but it's off the screen here. We've got a link to, you know, we have our uh, online sort of support materials. So we can't even see it uh, on this, this page. Um, This is our login page. I'm only showing you that. It's not really important for this talk. I'm not really going to talk about the design that we went with, the colors or anything. I'm not sure how good it looks any, anyway on this non-illuminated screen. But um, the only point of showing that is this was the only place we actually put a big splash image on our course. Because the one thing we weren't asked for is more marketing images, more uh, flashy stuff on the dashboard. That, you know, big hero images, anything like that. It was quite clear we didn't need that from our particular use case. Yeah, we're not trying to sell courses to anyone when they hit the front page. We want to get people so, to see the information they need as quickly as possible. So we, we didn't need that. So this is our 
what our dashboard looks like. So it's still a work in progress. It's kind of, we're kind of 95% there with all of this, but um, there's a number of plugins we've developed here that I'm going to take you through. Um, so you can see it's kind of quite functional. Um, there's not, yeah, as I say, we haven't got big marketing spots or anything going on. Um, actually, this layout has been quite carefully designed in terms of how the three columns balance out. So you should find, if you weren't being coached by me, you should find that your eye is probably hitting somewhere around this kind of area here when you're scanning into this page. Now, we know that people want to get to their courses, and you probably find, if you're looking at this, when you then switch your attention to, to find your course, your eye is getting pulled over a bit to the left, because this is obviously quite far on the left here. That's kind of intentional. We know that's what people are going to want to do, but we want to keep this space here kind of active in people's attention, so we can put useful things there that we would like people to know are there that are useful to them. They're not kind of shelved off to the sides and not really part of that visual hierarchy. So this is our kind of level A hierarchy here. And these blocks here, FAQs, learning, so that's our, sorry, you can't hear me, I'm turning around. That would be level B, really. And then down over here and off the page, of course, we're, we're at a level C level of importance in terms of that hierarchy of information. So we tried to structure everything according to that. Um, so in that bottom level, just to cover that, we've got a little, this is actually a kind of news slider, but we were using images here. So all those links that were to do with news that, were for, that aren't really to do with the, what you're doing in Moodle necessarily, that's kind of encapsulated by this. And it's a different experience for students and staff. They'll get different things. Um, so we have kept some of those links. We've got this learning links block. And sometimes that will be on the page. Sometimes it'll be pushed down a bit, depending on what's going on up here. But um, what we felt we had to do, what we decided in the end, was we had to focus in on what, uh, what is Moodle for. It's a learning tool. It, it's, it, at LSBU, at least, it's about carrying out your day-to-day um, -day academic life regarding your curriculum, mainly. So we, we kept some links on that main dashboard page, but we, we filtered it down to things that are um, directly related to that learning. So things like library, skills for learning. And then the other links, uh, we just packed them away up in, sorry, in, a, um, in a menu at the top. I mean, that's nothing groundbreaking for Moodle. We've been able to have configurable lists of links in, in many themes. Uh, we can put that in there. The only thing about this one in our theme is that it's configurable by the account type, the, the user type, so if students or staff or external or admin, they can get different sets of links suiting them. That's just configurable within the theme, just a little thing we added. Um, so we've got this latest notices feed in the middle. Um, that was something we were asked for very commonly in our engagement sessions. The students wanted to see uh, the, mainly from the news forums or what we call announcements forums. Um, this is a key thing that we have found is maybe one of the number one things people want to do in Moodle is give out these communications. Um, so we, we've, put, we've given that kind of pride of place. It's not the first time anyone's done that, but what we wanted to do is make sure we had a, a place for a feed of information that's sitting there. We, it's quite similar to the more recent Moodle standard theme where you've got your um, timeline, and then you've got your courses as well in different views. But we wanted to make sure we had the, the list of courses and the feed there. And we, we, we probably will add other things as well as just forum posts in there. For now, it's just an aggregated feed of forum posts. Um, on the left there, we've got our course menu. It's quite utilitarian. As you can see, we, haven't, we don't use course images. We haven't got little tiles or anything like that. And that's partly because at LSBU we knew we, would, we were not going to get coverage of getting course images for all the courses. 90% of them are going to be a blank square if we do that, or a picture of a cloud or something, placeholder thing. So we're, we keep it pretty simple. And this, this view will compress down when you have a lot of courses. But what we have got is um, sections, or they're grouped, sorry, groups of courses. And for us this was really, really important actually because um, the way we use our Moodle, we, we keep uh, the same Moodle, we've kept the same Moodle alive for the last five years, and students are supposed to be able to go in and access their last two years of courses 
Um, so we don't archive at the end of the year. We don't, well, we do archive, but we don't, uh, you know, start afresh every year. Um, we also have a funny thing where we've got a, a January intake. So the, the students that just started now in 20, January 2018, they're in the 1718 academic year, but by the time they get to September, they'll be studying with the next lot, but they're still in this academic year. So, so you can end up with um, a lot of courses and not all of them are the ones that you need right now. So what we have is just a simple menu block, but the, behind the scenes it's quite powerful for configuration. It's got all the business logic that you can configure. It could be something about the course, uh, whether it's the um, course start and end dates, whether it's something about the course title, the short name, something about the category. Um, any of those things could decide which section that goes into. And you can even have it based on what kind of roles people have on that course. So for, for us, for a, for a lecturer, that we know if they are teaching that course, if we, they have active students on that course, because we sort of archive courses by making, giving, changing the student's role to a read-only role. So the lecturers may see a view that is saying something like, uh, courses you're teaching this semester, and that's what you're seeing, or your modules this semester, and then you've, you may have something else. We've got, this is a student view here, you've got their modules, their course space, other, and, um, we can really do what we like with that. So that's just something a little bit different that we felt to be useful. Um, okay. Uh, oh, the other thing that's missing on here, as I say, not this, all of this is completely finished. We, we would, of course, have an all courses button that you can't see on this screen and the site catalogue as well. So that, I'm aware that that's not on there at the moment. Um, we've got this help button at the top left here. It's a slightly funny thing. You don't see that too often in websites, like a big help, <laughs> help me out button. Um, we, we thought about this for a while and we decided this was a good idea. Um, something really obvious that sits in the corner of every page in Moodle, whether you're in a course or in your dashboard here or whatever you're in, you've always got this little help button. And all that does is uh, when you <laughs> click on it, you get a light box or a modal window. Um, and whatever HTML we've configured to stick in there will be shown. In fact, we're going to do something a bit nicer looking than just some text. It will probably have some panels to um, send people to different areas of help. It's just your first access point for accessing any help around how to use Moodle, or it's, and it's blending together. Of course, you'll be the same. Your help means it might mean how to use this thing in Moodle, how to do this thing in an assignment, or it might be how to do some related academic process that isn't really about Moodle. So we've got different ways of helping students, FAQs, um, online help, face-to-face -face training, ICT help desk is down the bottom there. Um, and this is just a way to quickly direct them through uh, to that help. But it's always there. And again, students will see different help text there to what the um, staff will see. Uh, next on here, we've got the FAQs block. This is actually something, it's, you see it a lot, FAQs in different websites, so I haven't seen it too much in Moodle. Um, we actually think this is going to be quite a big game changer for us. Um, it's, it's, it's kind of what it says on the tin, you set up FAQs, um, you can have as many as you like in the system and you, you decide which ones are going to surface up into this block. So, so we've got another view where you can browse all through the FAQs. Again, it's customizable by uh, the type of user. So the students will see some kinds of FAQs, staff will see others, ad admins will see different ones. The good thing about it is these FAQs are little snippets of information, a quick answer to your query or a pointer to where you need to go, but it can sit there right there on the course dashboard and it can also be timely as well. So we can change these as we go through the academic calendar. So um, if it's time, if it's a peak submission time, what's going to be showing there for the staff is how do I do blind marking? How do I release my marks to the students? How do I set up this or that? Those kind of things. If it's a student, it might be how do I actually use Turnitin or something like that. So we think that's pretty key actually. So um, what, what, you do, what you get when you click on an FAQ is you get again a, a sort of pop-up box there, modal window. You get the answer to the FAQ, um, which is probably often going to have a link out to some other material, some other thing you're going to need to see. 
but also at the bottom there we've got the related FAQs. So when you set up in the admin panel, this is actually an admin uh, interface that isn't quite finished yet, so I'm not showing it on here, but you've got uh, set up the FAQ, who's it for, um, but also you can tag other FAQs in there, so that builds up those related questions. So it's a standard kind of thing. And then you've got the view, view all FAQs, and that will be a uh, explorer view where you can see all the different categories, because they'll be in different categories as well there. Um, uh, the next thing quickly is notices on the dashboard. You can see here a notice that's been placed inside the dashboard. Um, what's going on here though is we've got a plugin that's an admin plugin, that's, it's a notice manager plugin. So we've got uh, four or five different places and locations we can put notices, and we've got a number of different kinds of notices that are set, done by, uh, set up by default, and they can be dismissible and things like that. So I'll just take you through that quickly. So uh, I don't know if you can play spot the difference, what changes when I hit the button. Did anyone spot it? <laughs> Some people are going like that. Yeah, this is a, it's now a dismissible notice here. So like you'll have seen it elsewhere in Moodle, Moodle has these things in core where something happens and you get a little dismissible bootstrap notice. But this is ones that we can control and uh, people can view them and decide to dismiss them. And it will remain on their dashboard every time they log in until they've dismissed it. Um, so if we can put that in a, in a block position or a general banner across the top. Um, this, again, this one's dismissible. Um, no, we're using this, the uh, typical bootstrap styles here, so we've got a red one with an exclamation mark. So we have a few uh, ones that are the standard option. You can just put the text in and you get a bootstrap thing. But we can also drop in any HTML we want. So it doesn't have to be red or blue, it can just be a blank box with whatever HTML we want to put in. Um, and it can be dismissed by a little cross or it can be dismissed by a button which has got configurable text. Uh, when you set the, the uh, notice up. So common thing might be a bit more definite action, don't show this again, um, but it could be something else like this. This is a different kind of notice that can be, that is a pop-up notice or a modal notice that you see when you log in. And so you have to read it and you have to dismiss it and you can't ignore it. And it could be for things like T and Cs, that's what I've mocked up there. Um, it could have a more friendly button. Okay, I get it, or whatever. Um, so this could be used for all kinds of important stuff. It might be you're agreeing to the site policy. It might be, I don't, I'm not sure if this is going to be useful for GDPR, if it fits in with that, possibly, I don't know. Um, and lastly, the most annoying type of notice is the one that you can dismiss it, but it'll keep coming back again. This is like on your bank. When you log into, I don't know, I'm in Santander, I think, I, I log in, and if you don't click the don't show this message again, you'll get it every time. I just built that in there for good measure. I hope we don't have to use that one too much because it's kind of annoying, but if it's something re we really, really need to make sure that people have seen and registered that they've seen it, this is what we can use. So that could be for anything. So we're really talking about the communication aspect of how we're using the, the platform here. Um, and of course, because all, all of these things are the dis dis dismissals have to be tracked in the database with this. It's not like uh, just a JavaScript click and the thing's gone. Then we've also got the data. So we have all the data, everyone who says they've viewed that notice, whichever notice it is, anyone who's dismissed it, we can, t we can, if someone comes in and says, we weren't told this, we can say, yep, we've got this whole list. This is our audit trail. You were told it. it was, this notice was up between these dates and you actually clicked it on this date and said that you'd seen it. So. Um, one more type, we've got the one that sits across the top of the site, that's probably for downtime, things like that, that'll be in all the, all the pages. Okay, so, um, and yeah, just to finish up on that, uh, the way that works under the hood is that the theme has to expose um, a few different render points, so the theme has to be compatible with that plugin. It's an admin plugin um, where you configure all your notices and it, the theme has to be compatible with it. And also, we have this auxiliary block, so you can see that there, uh, it is a block, and 
your notice can be uh, posted to different positions or you can choose a channel, you can set up channels and the block listens to the channel. So anything that's published to that channel will appear in that block. So theoretically you could have more than one of these blocks. You could have 20 different blocks for different channels, different notices. You could put them in a course if you have blocks in your course and you could see the notices there as well. So it's quite powerful really. It's just um, how we're trying to en enhance what we can do communication wise. Okay. Uh, right, I'm going to, I think I've been talking for a while now, so I'm going to, um, uh, how long have I got now, do you think? Yeah. Just have a couple of minutes. A couple of minutes, okay. No, 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 sorry. Yeah. Uh, we, we just have a couple of minutes left, so. Yeah, questions, so, okay. Yeah, so, okay. Yeah, okay, I think what I'll do is, I had, there's some other stuff I had to show you about what we're doing inside courses, um, but I think it's best to stop there because I've done the dashboard side of things and take any questions, if that's okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I think the survey you have done for the course formats, what was the main reason for students to complain? They couldn't find content. Season. In the course formats? Yeah, what was the issue? Okay, so, yeah, I mean, the main thing that the students are always telling us is that they, usually they can't find their assignments, that's the thing they mainly care about. Um, and, as I say, we have, we have a big variety of uh, types of content creators at the university. So we, we have everything from really well-designed courses where students probably aren't complaining about finding things, because you can, you can use Moodle to design a decent course, and and have things put there um, that are easy to find. But the problem is coming where people are, are not really uh, following the best practices and they're putting just all kinds of things. And what, one of the things I was going to show you on the courses was um, some of the little tweaks we'd made to uh, navigation and things like that. So, for example, what our, some of our uh, content creators will do is they'll put all sort of content either in that section zero that appears at the top of every page. I don't know if you, you get this one. And so you, every time you scroll through the page, you're seeing the same page. It's only, it was only designed for a little banner or something like that or a notice at the top, but it's the first thing people see, so they'll put a lot of content in there. Um, so we took that off of everything but the, the first page. And so it becomes your kind of landing page. That section zero is your landing page. And then underneath, you've got your navigation to your sections. Um, they also will put a lot of content sometimes in the description of the sections. And when you, we tend to use the topics format with the different uh, page per section. And that can really muddy the waters as to where, how you get into the section. Because by the time you finish reading all that content, the, the link, which is the section heading, is at the top. You might have lost track of it. Or it might be other links within the description. You're not sure where you're going. So that kind of confusion comes up. We did things like the uh, section descriptions we could tail them at a certain point and fade it out and put a little more link. So you click on that, that takes you to the actual section. Uh, we made the whole thing clickable, so it's not just the, the title. Same with the activities. If you've got just, uh, a, a certain amount of description, the whole box is a big link. I was going to show you that, but I haven't got time now. And so we just it's just trying to find the things that, uh, that they need to find when we have a lot of content, really. That's usually the problem. Hi. Hi, just a quick one. We're actually in the process of designing a very similar notification system, and it looks like you've done all the work for us. Oh, right. <laughs> Would you be prepared to share the code, or are you able to? Um, so the, my plan with all this is to get everything eventually submitted to, to uh, plugins directory. Um, at this stage, it's probably not ready to share in the state it's in, but I'm really keen to, to get there. Like all the people here, I'm saying we're, we're going to make it open source in the end. It's genuine. I'm, I'm, I plan to get it there. We need to get it out working for us um, first, and then the next stage will be to sort of tighten it all up so that we can submit it to the plugins directory. But if you want to come and ch chat to me about it, I'm sure we could um, we could take that further. Mine's a plugin question as well. Um, I don't know if it's something you wrote or something you got from Moodle.org, but the plugin that shows the groups of courses on the front page. Yeah. Is that something available already, or again? No. So no. I'll just put it on the last slide. Hang on. So that's the, some of the plugins we made. 
or I made for, for this project. There's a couple of others as well that are not so important, but yeah, the course menu where you can configure, where have you gone? Oh, there you are. Um, yeah, it's, they're all at a similar stage. They're kind of at their beta or nearly beta stage of, of completion. So none of it's really quite ready for sharing at the moment or, or worth sharing, but the, the, the plan is very much as soon as possible once we get it out up and running that we will we'll be sharing those. And yeah, I would like to get all of these submitted to the plugins directory. Some of them are a little, not, not very interesting little plugins that just some people will find useful. Others, as others I think will be quite useful for a lot of people. Thank you, this has been really useful. We're doing something similar, looking at the look and feel of our VLE and we moved to Snap. And one thing that we'd been looking at when we changed is what you're talking about uh, just recently, where you kind of do clicking through to get to places rather than scrolling down all the time. And since then we've had feedback from people who say they don't like all the clicks. Um, so I was just wondering if this has happened to you or kind of what, where you are right now with how much students have to, well, users have to go down the page to find information, how much there's less on one page and they click through to, to get to other places. Well, um, so, yeah, do you mean within courses particularly, yeah? Uh, yeah, well, with our, home, with our landing page, we've tried to get all the important stuff on the page as much as we can, but within reason, we're just, just trying to strike that balance. Um, and sometimes they do have to expand a menu to get to the thing that it's, you know, we've had to make, create a priority list. Um, within courses, we use the, the standard topics format and we, the default setting is different page per section for us. And we find that almost everybody sticks with that. Some people, when they've got shorter courses, they want to, they take, to switch it to everything on one page and I think that's better. But we, we tend to find that our courses, the standard module course has got at least um, 17 or 18 sections. It wouldn't, I don't think that would work well as one big page scroll. And of course we could do things like the collapsed topics format, all those kinds of things, but this is one of the limitations I'm talking about uh, when you put it in context. There were things that we were, when we started doing this project, there was a sort of kind of red line drawn around certain things that we, we were told we had to keep. One of them was we wanted to keep that same format for now until we've developed our own one, which is going to be very similar but with other stuff going on, maybe a bit of a mini course dashboard in going on there. Um, other things like we had to keep the turn editing on button at the top right of the page. We, didn't, we weren't allowed to go with the, with the idea of the cog that takes you to the settings. We had to keep the, the course or the administration block on the left hand side at the, at the bottom underneath those sections because these are what things that people used, are used to. Um, we had to keep the same icons for the activities. We were kind of given that little list by the powers that be, as it were, saying that this is what we're not prepared to change at this point. There's going to be enough change going on. So we have to keep the user experience familiar, especially for the staff who are having to edit, do all the, a lot of work editing the content. Because it's not as though we have a small team of really hardworking learning technologists that we can just train them up and they'll go out and sort it all out for us. We've got to deal with a whole big mishmash of people, so 